Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews and this is my review for episode 7 of The Rings of Power. Now, the rings of power. Ugh. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm in a, a bit of a, a pickle place with this one. Um. Don't get me wrong. Okay. This show looks the par. It looks bloody spectacular. I will give you that every single day of the week. The cinematography is superb. The effects look superb. The costumes look superb. The orcs look fucking brilliant. I will give you that every single time. I will bow down and admit the orcs look superb. But beyond the characters of Durin and Elrond, who I think is are, are the, the best the best um, characters in this series. I think the, the the scenes that they have together are extremely well written. I think the performances are heavily invested in an, an, in an emotional angle. Their friendship is completely believable. I am very much invested every time they come on screen. I'm interested in where they're going, even though the story um, kind of is a bit naff, this, this whole disease, this, this fake disease. It is fake, you know it's fake, you know it's been created by Sauron in some form or another to deceive the elves and to, you know, put the, the dwarves in a difficult position. Well, maybe not, maybe they just added it, but that's the thing. Everything's added in this series, isn't it? It's all added, it's all created from, you know, one, apparently, <laughs> so they said, um, one writing session. And that came from Amazon themselves as well. But anyway, I do like the the uh, the, the story aspects with the dwarves. And in this episode, you really get you know a sort of a grander development with the with the dwarves and the elves and with Durin and his father. Uh, there are spoilers in this, by the way. Um, so there you go. And that's it. That's been the most interesting part of the series for me. Now. Coming away from that, so Durin does have a, a major fallout with his father about the, the mining of Mithril, um, you know, to save the elves from this dying, um, apparently. And Durin sees for himself that it does actually work. It cures a leaf before his eyes. And and thus, um, you know, him and Elrond go and try to break into this cavern to start mining the Mithril. And Durin... Uh, elder, Father Durin, uh, like Father Christmas, um, comes in and loses his shit. And it, it's, it's, it's decent, it's well written, it's a well written scene, well written moments between father and son, friend, and you know, they're talking about like, you know, moving on from the past of being isolated and speaking to friends and helping each other, um, coming away from this isolationist past. And it works. However, beyond that, for me, this series is is a mismatch. It's all over the place um, in writing, in story, in character, um, <laughs> in um, you know, trying to mystery box you, trying to convince you that someone's evil when we we know for a fact they're not going to be. Um, and then providing, you know, Easter eggs left, right and centre. The building the show on Easter egg moments as well, rather than strong character-based writing. Uh, and it's summed up no worse for me than everything to do with the Numenorean side. Um, I, I, I don't buy anything that's happening with them. You have... Um, you know, the Numenorians protecting the Southlanders, you've got Southlanders, there's like 50 of them, and 
Halbrand is the king of these 50 people. <laughs> it feels incredibly small, and yet the world looks so massive. It's, it's bizarre. There's a, there's a bizarre feeling about this, about this, everything. And at the start of the episode, you know, we get it, we're supposed to feel incredible loss at the, as the result of this massive volcano, and yet all the central characters that were there facing that pyroclastic flow from, you know, um, Mount Doom erupting. Um, <laughs> all right. Did anybody see Dante's Peak? Dante's Peak, where the pyroclastic flow decimates everything and kills loads of people. But in this, ah, oh, you're, you're all right. You might just be a bit chesty. You might have a sore eye. Um, or, you know, you might go blind. Um, and we're supposed to feel sorry for characters we've met in one episode that do die. And you're like, well, I can't even remember their names. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a bit laughable, really. It's a bit laughable. But anyway, anyway, we go um, all the way through. We see emotions, incredible emotions. They all blame Galadriel for bringing them here. And yet the queen is stoic, even though she's now blinded because the power cost it for only, only blinded her. Well, no, it wasn't even that. She got she got hurt in a collapsing uh, house. And I assume her eyes got burnt. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but there you go. Um, so... Everybody's just angry with Gladrill, and yet she goes, no, we're going to come back. We'll come back with a greater force. Good, I hope you do. I hope you come back with more than just a hundred soldiers that somehow fit onto each boat. Um, yeah. And then we move to uh, the Harfoots, and uh, this is where I've absolutely checked out with the writing there is a laughable moment to the Harfoots. They're, they're all, they're all, they all get to this place and they realise it's been completely destroyed. And yet, um, not Gandalf, um, you know, they send him away because they blame him. And yet he actually resurrects everything. He resurrects everything. And then, you know, these evil people come, these evil witch people who are looking for not Gandalf because they think he's Sauron, I guess. Um... Uh, they destroy all the, the, the Harfoot's stuff. And you're supposed to feel sad about these people that abandon their own folks. And then... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Nori's father says something incredibly, incredible. <laughs> incredibly incredible. And I mean it like that. He says, we're Harfoot's. Because um, Nori wants to go and you know, find not Gandalf to bring him back so they, he can help them and they can help him. And uh, he says, we're Harfoots, we stick together. Lies! Deception! <laughs> Motherfucker, your people tried to leave you because you broke your ankle. These people have left people to die before in the past because they couldn't keep up. But apparently Harfoots stick together. The writers have no idea about their own dog shit writing that they've already created. It's rubbish. It's laughable. If you have any sort of, you know, if you can remember anything from the previous episodes, the dialogue is just terrible. It doesn't make any sense. Us half foot stick together. No, you don't. You allow people to die. These people have actually marched ahead of you and got there before you. What the hell? Rubbish! <laughs> shit! Absolute shit! Oh, my word. But like I said, it looks fantastic. It looks great. It's just the writing is laughable. It's, it's terrible. I've got no issues with any of the actors in the Harfoots. I think they're all pretty well done. They're, they're you know, marvellously led by Lenny Henry. I'm really invested in Lenny Henry. I think he's, he's great. I want to see him move forward, and we do see him admit his follies in the past and move on and agree to go with them as being the best tracker to go and find not Gandalf. I like it. It's good. More of this, please. But less of the terrible writing, less of the concocted story that isn't really working. And then, to top it all off for me, <sighs> this magical leaf that um, Durin healed with the Mithril, or that he healed itself, to be fair, um, King Durin, so Durin Elder, Durin's father, 
um, picks up a leaf and goes to the little gap that Durian and, and Eldorand created where the Mithril exists. And he, he chucks it through this gap and the leaf falls, falls forever, falls for leagues. And it reaches the bottom of the cavern and it sets fire. And thus the Balrog wakes up. I shit you not, the Balrog wakes up. And it might well be an Easter egg pointing to the future. But the fact is it wakes up. In what we know from the films, not just the books, I'm talking about the films, the Balrog is woken up by the dwarves delving too greedily and too deep. Okay, we haven't seen any greed, we haven't seen any delving, we haven't seen them even go any e going deep at all. And yet the Balrog is awake, so it's already awake, it's already aware, it's waiting. Rather than being disturbed and going absolutely fucking bonkers, which is what it's supposed to do, and completely ruin their kingdom, thus creating this poetic sort of story about the dwarves and how a greed and avarice completely destroyed their kingdom. You know, looking inward and looking down has destroyed them rather than looking upwards and out. No, a leaf has woken the Balrog. It removes any poetic notion about, about the Balrog because it's already awake. I get it, yeah, it is probably an Easter egg. Somebody said, oh, it might just be an Easter egg for the future on my Twitter. Granted, I'll give you that if that's the case. But for me, the sheer fact that it's awoken already dispels that notion because it's, it's kind of just awake and going, well, if anybody comes in, I'm just gonna do them in. <sighs> All right. <sighs> it's, it's, it's messy, it's messy unnecessarily so, and they're trying to do so much in a very short space of time. I mean, funnily enough, we haven't even you know, broached the idea of the creation of the rings yet, and I'm assuming we're gonna see some kind of aspect of that. In this, for, in this final episode, like the beginnings of the creation of the rings. But everything else is moving at such a pace that I, I can't, I, I, I can't fathom. And I'm baffled because it feels utterly thin and small and yet it looks so grand. I'm not, I'm not as angry as some other people are out there. I'm just, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because I expected something to be a lot more well-structured and well-written and well-catered and well-looked after. If you're doing something like this, if you're, if you're adapting Shakespeare or Marlowe or anything like that, you, surely you would look to try and grasp the full nature of it. All that this show is doing is showcasing what they don't have the rights to what they don't have the rights to in the Second Age, and how they're just concocting nonsense to try and fill in their own gaps, and thrusting us into what we already know far too early. So much is happening in, the, in, this, in this show that shouldn't be happening at this point. Fine, it's TV, I'll, I'll give you it, I'll give you it, fine. I'm just a bitter fucking reader, all right, fine. But, <laughs> when you go from this show to the film, which is what that, and you know what they're trying to do, because the musical looks like the music sounds like it, the, the way people speak sounds like it. This is everything like Lord of the Rings, like the movies. It looks the part. It sounds like it should be the part, and yet it's just a Frankenstein creation. That's what it is. It's just a Frankenstein creation with nothing really deeper than that. It's just surface Lord of the Rings. Surface Tolkien. <sighs> Unfortunately for me, this show and this review in particular, I, I've chose to record um, in the perfect spot, really. Yeah. You can probably surmise what I'm doing at this point. Anyway, apologies if that upsets you. I'm sat where I'm sat. But alas, this show for me is, 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 it's not great. I'm hoping that things will improve in season two. I'm gonna stick with it because I am a fan of Tolkien from my childhood. Tolkien was my introduction into fantasy on a wider scale. 
So if anybody says, oh, well, why are you keeping on watching it? Because I, I want to watch it because I want it to get better. I'm not just watching to make these angry reviews, just to make these, you know, hmm, you just you just want to call angry reviews. No, I, I'm, I'm making them because I'm watching it. I want it to be good. Anyway, this, this episode for me is it. <sighs> Bang average. <laughs> Bang average television that looks great and yet has no... No depth to it beyond beyond Durin and Elrond. Christ, if they weren't in this, I don't I don't know where I'd be at. But for the moment, I'm giving this a four out of ten. God, I hope they create something great for the finale and that we get a decent jump start going into season two. But there we are. Four out of ten. I'm gonna go now. Bye bye.